My next guest takes on Drew Brokenshire at BFL 43 on May 7th. Jeremy Kennedy joins me here on the program. Jeremy, how's it going? Good, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Glad to have you back. And I was excited when this fight got announced because, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure getting to watch you compete. But I noticed that you uh, recently competed in a uh, BJJ tournament down in the States. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was good, man. I've always wanted to go to do a Naga tournament, you know, just with uh, the, the rule set. You're allowed uh, pretty much everything. And and they give out belts. So I was just uh, trying to get down there and get one of those. And it was cool. It was like a, my first higher level tournament, like not local. And yeah, I had a lot of fun on that, man. So looking forward to doing more of those. Yeah, I was going to say, is, is the plan to do more of those things? I just spoke with uh, one of your buddies there, Micah Brakefield. He's doing a, a grappling super fight on this card. Uh, he was basically saying, you know, it's a good way to keep active. Is that sort of the way you see it too? Yeah, exactly. Like you're you're still competitive. It's the same mindset. Like might not be the exact same as, as fights, but, you know, you're still sharpening your mindset and your conditioning and everything like that. It's a good way to stay stay active, yeah. Speaking of staying active, uh, 2015, I wasn't too kind to you. I know you were hampered by injuries here and there. Uh, how were you able to keep things positive? Because I know you were a guy that, that really likes to keep active. Oh, man, it was, it, was, it was a rough year. I'm just trying to put that year behind me. You know, 2015, just it started off great winning the belt in January and then uh, had some rough luck after that. But, yeah, there's, there's no point dwelling on it. You know, I can't. I just got to uh, move forward now, keep looking forward to the next fights. I was going to say, let's talk about the present. Uh, you're taking on Drew uh, Brokenshire, who's 15-6. and six. I think a lot of people want to know, why is this not a, a title fight? Uh, I'm not too sure. That's how it was offered to me. You know, I think uh, there's a couple reasons. Maybe, like, I didn't really get too specific. I mean, I'm not really complaining. I'm three rounds or five rounds, I've got a fight. And it was looking like I wasn't going to get a fight there for a while because, like, I was supposed to fight Marcus Brimage, and then that he confirmed everything got all set, and then he just pulled out. And then we were left at, like, five weeks, and I was like, well, this is going to happen again. And uh, then he came to me with Drew, but it was offered as a three round. So maybe with the time frame, he didn't want a five, or he didn't want to offer it to an American, or he wanted more money for a five. I, I don't know. But I didn't, I didn't question it. I didn't care. I just signed right away, and we're ready to go. I was going to say, it's your job to fight, not worry about the politics and yeah. everything else. So at least, at least you're getting a fight here. Um, you know, how difficult has it been getting opponents in Canada? Just because I know uh, in general, a lot of guys aren't really lining up to fight you these days. Yeah, it's uh, and it, it's tough because locally there's there's not a big 45 division. In Battlefield alone, like you look at their 170 division and Chris Anderson, the, the champ, he has like options and options, you know, he's and he's fought a lot of guys getting to the title where me, it's. It's hard. Like I fought Andre, and then now there's not many more guys in BC. Like there's Saba, and he's he's the only other BC guy. Then that's it, and everything else is uh, out east. So I got to look either in uh, the states or or elsewhere. But it's tough, man. Uh, how do you think you match up against uh, Broken Shire? I think I match up good. You know, I think I match up good with a lot of 45ers with my my body type and my style. You know, my pressure and everything. So. It's going to be a good fight, man. I uh, I was cornering Gary Mangot last April down in the States, and I saw Drew fight in the main event there. And I knew right then, I was like, oh, this guy's, this guy's on my radar. You know, he, he looked good. It was a fun fight. I think he's going to bring out a lot in me, and uh, he's pretty close, so I knew we were probably going to end up fighting. Uh, how's training camp going for this fight? Uh, where, where are you training? I know you normally uh, train at Revolution, but have you kind of done a bit of cross-training as well in between there? Yeah, I have uh, my, my training with... Um, sorry, one sec here. Yeah. My training with Revolution has been the same. You know, it's good. I meet up with Baby every morning and uh, we get some good training in there. But uh, he's, he's heading out for a week or so. So uh, I've been cross training with Tristan Connolly, actually, my, my old old opponent that I couldn't end up fighting, right? And heading out to Dynamic there and training with those guys. Just a bit bigger guys, right? So uh, I'm, I'm training with the guys at Revolution and then I, I do a couple days out in Dynamic just different body types, different, uh, different style of training. And uh, you mentioned uh, Bibby there. That, of course, is uh, Bibiana Fernandez, the uh, one FC champion. Yes. Uh, great great training partner. doesn't hurt to have him as a training partner. Uh, you know, Bibby always goes down to Seattle and, and train, uh, you know, with Matt Hume and those guys down there with Demetrius Johnson. I know uh, Sabah Fadaya, your buddy, he, he went down there and trained, I believe, for like a day or two. Is there any plans for you to head down there and, and perhaps uh, gain some knowledge from Mighty Mouse? Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be cool. I just, I don't, I don't have that relationship with anyone there. You know, uh, Bibi, Bibiano goes down there all the time. Um, he take, takes Gary and I don't know how Saba ended up there, but he, he must have a relationship. But 
I just don't really have any contacts there or anything, and I haven't really talked to Bibiano about it. So there's no plans in the immediate future, but probably maybe after, after this fight. And last year, uh, you spent some time at Team Alpha Male. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, things were a little awkward with uh, your, your then opponent, Kyle Nelson, down there. Um, is there any plans to go back to Alpha Male? I know it's a bit pricey to go down there, but I imagine, uh, you know, they, I, I know you had a good experience down there. Yeah, I, I loved it down there. Awesome group of guys. Um, maybe I want to go down there when I'm not training for a fight, you know, enjoy it a little bit more. Um, that way, like, the pressure's not too heated. You know, I can relax and really just learn when I'm down there. So um, I would have to set some things up. I'm pretty stable with the job here now, so it'd be hard to just take some time off. But, I mean, yeah, that's definitely something I want to do, though, for sure. Uh, what, what are you doing for work? You mentioned your job there. Yeah, I'm uh, teaching full-time jiu-jitsu and kickboxing now. So it's it's nice. It's it's not like a super long, long-hour days. It's, you know, 4 to 9, Tuesday to Friday. Gives me available to train all, all during the day. Even while I'm teaching, uh, you know, I can jump in. It's got a good jiu-jitsu school, so I get a lot of good roles in. And, uh, yeah, then I get my three-day weekend and train all day all throughout that. And it's good. It's perfect. Uh, you're supposed to fight Kyle Nelson. I mentioned that there. Uh, that didn't end up happening. Uh, Kyle, I know, has a, has a fight coming up, I believe, for Elite One. Uh, do you guys think you'll ever fight? You, or is that even a fight you want to do now with him not being undefeated anymore? Uh, yeah, like, it lost a lot of it when he lost his last fight there. But, uh, I mean, if he... He picks up a win here and then maybe another one. I'm, I'm, I'll probably be interested just because there's just so much happened with that. It's like, I feel like it's unfinished, you know, so I'll probably want that fight, but there's a lot of fights on my radar right now. I'm, uh, I'm kind of thinking about now that I'm finally back and healthy and ready to go. I'm just getting excited, but we'll see. I'm just dealing with Drew right now. And then, uh, yeah, I'll have, I'll have some things to say hopefully after that. Well, let's talk about your fight. I got to get a prediction for this one. How do you see this one uh, going down on May seventh? Uh, I have no prediction. You know, I, I know I'm 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 healthy. I'm in great shape. It's a three round fight, so I'm gonna rather have to make it uh, make it quick and put the pressure on. Um, my buddy Sean Elbrick there, he he predicted a late second round TKO, so we'll go with that. That's what we'll go. With. I like that. Um, how many times do you want to fight this year, and do you feel like you're having to catch up for lost time? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm in no rush. I was, I was 23. I'm 23. So, um, you know, I'm not like I have to catch up for the last year. You know, last year I was still training. I, I still got a lot better. I just, I didn't end up getting the fight to show it. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll see. Maybe I'll make a quick turnaround with that June UFC card. Hopefully if I can, you know, come out injury free against Drew. And then if not, we'll look to see what's next, you know, maybe right before the summer and then right after the summer. And, yeah, keep going every three months after that or something like that. You mentioned the UFC there. I did a video a couple weeks ago about uh, guys I think that are very close to being in the UFC, and you were on that list. Um, do you feel like you're? Do you feel like? Uh, do you feel like you're kind of one of the more underrated uh, fighters out there? Just because you know last year you weren't as active. Um, you know when you see a lot of these lists, a lot of people don't seem to have you on there, and and I find that very perplexing. Yeah, I mean it is what it is. Lists are lists. I was glad to be on yours. Uh, I'm, I think maybe just because I was so you know, inactive lately the last year. And then I'm, I'm more of a quiet guy. I'm not outgoing and, you know, campaigning on Twitter and getting all my friends to sign a petition and do all that. Right. Stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to win fights and, and make it that way. You know, And then uh, I think that's just it. You know, I'm not, uh, not playing the other side of it and we'll see, you know, I think I've got a, I've got a better chance than a lot of guys with my age and my record and, you know, my, my style, my, my height, my body type, everything seems to be working out for me i don't need to go you know begging for it we'll see you got lots of time man uh, it's again you're only 23 uh yeah you know, that sort of the world is your oyster so to speak but uh we certainly look forward to the return of jbc may 7th <laughs> uh coming up here awesome. at bfl 43 uh jeremy always a pleasure talking to you just remind my audience where they can find you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs the floor is yours awesome thank you man um yeah i'm on instagram at jeremy kennedy 19 uh, Twitter at Jeremy Kennedy WC. And yeah, you can find me on Facebook. I got an athlete page there just under my name. And my sponsors, Active Body Nutrition, always keeping me up with my supplements. Um, area Banquet Hall and Convention Center. Oh man, the list goes on. But, uh, yeah, thank you.